Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Pitch It. I'm joined by my good friend Cameron. What's your uh, social media? Uh, you can find me on Neopets, Zanga, uh, yeah, Blogger. He's he's really big on Geo Zanga. Cities. Yeah. AIM, Instant Messenger. Yeah. yeah. Keyword AOL. I don't know. Do you have any like Twitter, Instagram, or anything? I really don't. Okay, cool. No. He's off the grid. I'm off the grid. Yeah. Just follow him uh, in spirit. That so, might be relevant later. Yeah, ooh. He actually came up with a good idea not long ago, and that's why he's here doing this pitch. I come since, up with those sometimes. Yeah, every now and then. So since uh, this is one of his good ones, we decided to make the most of it. But with Pirates of the Caribbean 5 hitting theaters, he said we should pitch our ideas for movie adaptations of other Disney theme park rides. We came up with two, I think, really good pitches. So no, we're, of course, not doing like ones based off of... Like, like not like the Dumbo ride yeah. or the teacups or something. Yeah, yeah so things, those those might already have movies attached to them. Yeah, so th things that that aren't already based on movies. Yeah. So the movie I want to pitch it would be an adaptation of the Haunted Mansion attraction. Nothing like the Eddie Murphy one from two thousand three. It would be a new thing. It would be probably directed by Guillermo del Toro because that's been in the works for years yep. and we've heard nothing about it. So that just needs to happen. The story would essentially be, it's 1963 New Orleans <laughs> and Dan Fogler plays a paranormal investigator who's hired by a young man played by John Boyega to find his sister Constance. In the wake of a fight between the siblings, she's gone missing, leaving only a pretty concerning note. While the note could be read as a suicide note, Boyega figures out that the note leads to her having run off to her old childhood obsession, Ravenswood Mansion, our titular haunted mansion. Fogler, having studied the mansion for some time, is only too thrilled to help, much to Boyega's relief. Being that the whole thing deals with ghosts and the supernatural, and given Boyega's skin color and the time period we're dealing with, he's had trouble finding more legitimate help. The two, Fogler and Boyega, set off together to the mansion to find Boyega's sister. But when they reach the mansion, will the 999 happy haunts already number a thousand? The movie would deal with elements from almost every iteration of the ride, from the classic layout in Anaheim and Orlando, to the Phantom Manor and Mystic Manor in Paris and Hong Kong, respectively. Our villain would probably be the eponymous Phantom of the Phantom Manor, who for some nefarious plot needs a 1,000th ghost to occupy the mansion, possibly to complete some ritual or something to set the spirits free to wreak havoc on the world. We would see characters from the ride such as Madame Leota, I'm thinking played by Eva Green, the hitchhiking ghosts. So there's a, a photo out there uh, from some photo shoot, a uh, promotional Disney photo shoot, with Jack Black, Jason Segel, and Will Ferrell as the hitchhiking ghosts. Yeah. It might be funny to have them in the film, if for nothing else, as a fun cameo as those characters. Yeah. And even characters from the, the stretching portraits on the ride. I like that. I could also see Tim Burton do that, like, in a return to form. Sure. Because Ava Green has worked a lot with Tim Burton, and that seems kind of like, maybe a little Beetlejuice-esque, like, parts of it, where it's like, deals with spirits in this kind of weird world. Right. But it's also light and can be fun for kids too. The name Ravenswood Manor actually, or Mansion comes from the, the Phantom Manor. I didn't want to use Gracie because that was, Master Gracie is a character from the ride uh, that a lot of people attribute to being the owner of the mansion yeah. or even being the ghost host itself. But it was a character in the 2003 film, and we're trying to distance ourselves from that. Yeah. The name for the sister is Constance, which is the name given to the uh, the bride. So I don't know if that would maybe is tie into tie the plot, in? yeah. or uh, who do you think would be good to play her, though? To play John Boyega's sister? Um, Kierse Clemens just came into my head. She's... Uh, co-starring in The Flash. She was in, I think, Dope. Speaking of Dope, that's a good segue into my pitch. Shamik Moore stars in Dope with Kearsay Clemens, and he's actually one of the stars of my movie. So hey. mine is The Great Movie Adventure Ride, and wh what's the uh, theme park? The California... California. It's it's Holly yeah. it's Hollywood Studios. Hollywood it's Studios. Disney Hollywood right. Studios, formerly uh, MGM Studios. Yeah. So basically, Disney teamed up with MGM to do this movie ride. It has okay. all of these classic movie scenes that you actually ride through. Um, so you're a part of these movies. So I was thinking that it would be really cool to do a movie about that. It would star. Logan Lerman, Jane Levy, and Shamik Moore. They play childhood best friends, and it starts out with these three, you know, like, junior high kids doing home videos and 
uh, making like movies together and it goes through their childhood. The whole like opening sequence is kind of, you know, this montage of these kids filming movies and going to this movie theater, um, which is like this old timey movie theater that's been there for decades and in this small town and they go there to watch classic movies. That's like this movie theater specialty. They show, um, you know, all these classic movies from silent films all the way up to, you know, the Terminator and Alien and stuff like that. Then after this whole opening sequence, at the end of it, they graduate from high school and kind of go their separate ways and drift apart like a lot of us do you know with high school friends so logan lerman goes off to become a filmmaker he you know is still pursuing his childhood dream and jane levy goes off and becomes a film critic and Shamik Moore, I guess his parents aren't very supportive and they look down on the fact that he wants to be in the film industry because it's not a real job is how, you know, some people actually view it. Right. So he's like, whatever, I'll just stay here and make my parents happy and, you know, become a lawyer or, a lawyer. yeah, yeah, you know, do something that's respectable. So he does that and kind of pushes his passion aside and pretends it isn't there. Jane Levy, since she's a film critic, she's no longer as passionate about her love for, for cinema as she used to be. Sorry, I kicked the tripod. Oh, no worries. And then Logan Lerman is kind of bummed out because after graduating film school, he hasn't gotten much work because breaking into the film industry is really difficult. So they all end up back in their hometown and they meet up together and they go out to have some drinks and catch up. After they have some drinks and they're feeling good and, you know, the nostalgia is flowing, they're like, okay, well, let's go check out this old theater that we used to go to. So they walk by it and there's a notice that says, uh, you know, it's scheduled for demolition in two days. So they're really bummed out because they have so many great memories from there. So they decide to break in and, you know, try to preserve whatever they can inside and get one last look at it. So there's all these film reels on this giant rack, basically every classic iconic movie. But one of them knocks the big rack over and it spills into these chemicals because with all those old film reels, they use chemicals for a bunch of different stuff. So right, it right. mixes with that and all these film reels just kind of start melting into each other. They're freaking out and trying to clean it and save whatever they can. And as they're doing that, this antique projector turns on and starts sucking them and the film reels into it. So now, since all these film reels have mixed together, they're basically in a Who Framed Roger Rabbit universe except with classic movies where they are interacting with all of these iconic movie characters and it's like they'll you'll be walking down the street and you're in like a mobster movie and you turn the corner and all of a sudden you're you know in a western and now they have to find a way to survive all of these these movie characters because some of them are dangerous like the xenomorphs and the terminator and sure, sure. Uh, frankenstein and i was thinking that how 9000 from 2001 a space odyssey would be like the main antagonist because in that movie he's very self-aware and he knows what's going on around him and since all these movies are melted together i thought it would be fitting to have him be the mastermind since he's so self-aware he realizes what the situation is and now he's free from the confines of his own movie he kind of gets all of these other movie villains darth vader or whatever to come together and try to prevent these these three friends from restoring order and not only are they trying to restore order but they're trying to escape from this this dimension or whatever they're in because the this building there inside is going to be demolished in two days and if they're stuck inside they may be stuck there forever i think it'd, it'd just be really cool to see all these movie characters interacting and this isn't the most realistic pitch ever because so many movies that i i list here aren't owned by the same studio right. so it'd be a nightmare trying to get the rights to everything i mean wreck it ralph happened and look how many characters yeah. from different properties were in exactly that. uh who framed roger rabbit happened yeah. a long time ago i describe it as last action hero meets who framed roger rabbit and also stay tuned is was a movie starring john ritter him and his wife they get sucked into the tv and they go from channel to channel. With it no doubt being a Disney ride, and the ride itself actually having a segment devoted to Fantasia, yeah. it'd be funny if Mickey Mouse actually yeah, showed up as that. a character. Jeremy Davies plays the bumbling cowboy like bad guy, but then he ends up kind of teaming up with them. And then Scoop McNary is the bumbling mobster bad guy that also ends up teaming up with them. So those are kind of their sidekicks. Yeah, they're the kind of which, like... The ones from the ride. The, the pair of bad guy minion kind yeah, of guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's kind of a callback to the ride because there's two cars that go at once and one will stop in the uh, western section and they're hijacked by a uh, cowboy outlaw and the other one stops in the gangster like mobster section 
and this this gang member jumps on there and hijacks it. So Z type. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah see? Yeah. So I think it'd be cool to have the, those two kind of be their, their sidekicks because they're such different worlds, you know, right. the Westerns and mobsters. Like the uh, the cowboy and the Roman soldier in yeah, uh, and, Night and, at the Museum. And then Alden Ehrenreich, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He's okay. going to play Orson Welles in Citizen Kane. David James Elliott who played John Wayne in Trumbo. He'll play John Wayne in this from The Searchers. Robert De Niro will play Marlon Brando in The Godfather because I thought that would be fitting since he played a young Marlon Brando in Godfather Part Two. Tom Hiddleston would be Peter O'Toole in Lawrence of Arabia. Scott Eastwood, Clint Eastwood's son, would play his dad and Dirty Harry. Emily Blunt would be Mary Poppins because she's playing Mary Poppins she's anyway. In the, she's in the Mary Poppins Yeah, the, uh, Mary Poppins Returns, I think. Uh, Harrison Ford will play a younger version of himself as Indiana Jones. They'll use that de-aging software they did in Ant-Man with uh, with Michael Douglas. Sigourney Weaver will also play a younger version of herself from Aliens. Arnold Schwarzenegger will play a younger version of himself in Terminator. Which he's already been <clears throat> doing. Yeah, he's already Terminator done. Movies. So, and then other characters that I haven't cast that will appear in movies that will be referenced or that they'll they'll interact with will be Charlie Chaplin, Marilyn Monroe, Psycho, they'll end up at the Bates Motel at some point. Sure. Casablanca, Halloween, Singing in the Rain, and Judy Garland from Wizard of Oz will be in there too. If a character is from like a black and white movie, just them being completely black and white. Oh yeah. I've been thinking about that too because I want some of the characters to interact with each other, but they kind of go to different worlds within this world. So it's like when they're in the mobster world, it's filmed like an old mobster movie. If you could have like the audio tooled in, in the right way for like them to sound like they're yeah, from a movie of that Exactly. Time. That's what I want it to be. And I want the three main characters to be completely aware of every time it changes. And like if they're in a silent film, they don't speak. It's all title cards. And there's like the piano music playing and stuff right. like that. And they can comment on the title cards where they're reading their own title cards. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. It you would... could have a character like like held at gunpoint or being threatened or something they use a title card as a distraction yeah exactly like they say something the title card comes up then when it's gone they've run away yeah almost like deadpool and and all of the, the those types of jokes that you could put in there. yeah exactly and it will be directed by edgar wright he's a cinephile he loves movies and i think that would be really cool but i would also have all of the directors that are still alive today that directed movies that will be referenced in this, all of them will be executive producers and they'll be on set to kind of, I guess, be advisors. Steven Spielberg would come back to help direct the Indiana Jones segments. James Cameron can do the Terminator one. Ridley Scott can do Alien. Francis Ford Coppola could be there for The Godfather. I would want to see both of these movies. Oh, yeah. um, what are your pitches for a movie adaptation of a Disney theme park ride? Let us know in the comment section because I'm really interested to hear what all of you have to say. Also, be sure to hit subscribe and hit the like button and follow us on all of our social media Just accounts. Thanks for watching this episode of Pitch It. Until next time, I'm Jordan Ross and... I'm Cameron. Yeah, there we go. Cameron Hi. Potter. Yeah, Cameron Potter. We mentioned that earlier. No relation to Harry. Nope. Nope. Anyway, bye.